Our first lesson today is Isaiah 40, 21 through 31, and that's on page 668 in the Old Testament. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and make rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength and mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthness. Strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall and exhausted, will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Gospel reading for this day comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, verses 21 through 39, and that can be paid, found on page 35 in the New Testament. Mark 1, verses 21 through 39. Jesus and Simon and his brother Andrew went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. 
And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. I appreciate the invitation to come and speak to you this day about those early days of the ministry of Jesus in Galilee. My brother Simon and I were young and green and really didn't understand what we'd gotten ourselves into, but there was something about this Jesus that drew us to Him. And when he decided to take us and, and to go to the synagogue in Capernaum, our hometown, to begin his ministry, we were just delighted, as you can imagine, overflowing with joy and pride that here the new Messiah, as we would come to know him, had chosen to come to our town to our synagogue to begin his ministry. But I remember that not everything was going as planned that day. As Jesus was teaching and preaching in the synagogue, I, I can remember vaguely them talking about how powerful his words were and wondering about where his authority was coming from. But while I heard all this in the background, I couldn't get my mind off of the fact that back home, my mother was upstairs with a fever. It wasn't so much that she was sick, and I was concerned about her, but more importantly, here we were going to bring the Rabbi Jesus home, and there was no one to offer hospitality. No one to serve us. And the law does not allow us men to serve, you know. Not from the kitchen. So even though Jesus is sitting there teaching and preaching and casting out demons, my mind was back home trying to figure out how in the world we're going to welcome the Messiah into the home and not have any tea fixed, not have any lunch ready, and I didn't know what to do. As far as I was concerned, it was going to be very embarrassing. So I must confess I was somewhat distracted while Jesus was preaching and teaching and casting out demons in the synagogue. Finally, when the sermon was over and the people were leaving with amazement at his teaching, at his power to command demons and, and to preach and teach as if the words themselves were coming from God. We headed out and headed home. There are some moments in life when you have to face up that things aren't going to happen the way you had planned or hoped. And there's not anything you can do about it other than to suck it up and roll with the punches. And so when we entered the house, we told Jesus that Mother was upstairs with a fever and we didn't have any way to offer 
hospitality as required by law and custom. Well, Jesus went upstairs to see Mom, and we wondered what he was doing because normally, you know, a man doesn't go up to see a woman in her bedroom unless it's his wife or his own mother. And so we were kind of puzzled a little bit about what was going on here. And the next thing we know, Jesus is coming back down and Mother is coming with Him. With a smile on her face, joy in her heart, and she began to fix the tea and lunch for the rabbi. <laughs> Maybe this day will work out after all, I thought. And we had a great meal. We gathered and we finally talked about what had happened at the synagogue and, and we talked about how exciting it was to be in Capernaum. And we're looking forward to this new ministry of authority and healing. And then there was this knock on the door. Just when we were enjoying our conversation, there's a knock on the door. And don't you know it, the whole town is wanting in. <laughs> As if we had gone through enough to offer hospitality to this Jesus, now we had to offer hospitality to the whole town. I don't know where she had the energy. Her mother did it, as mothers do. She pulled it off. I don't know how many people she actually served that day, but it was a lot. It seemed that everybody was showing up because they had heard what happened at the synagogue. That Jesus was a healer. And that He cast out demons. And that somehow or another His words, His teaching, His preaching had the authority of God. And so they lined up with every imagined and real illness and demonic presence and anything they can do to get in the door and see this man Jesus. Kind of hard to believe that a little town like Capernaum, a fishing village in some ways, would have all of this going on. At the same time, you know, Simon and I were kind of pleased. All of a sudden, our family was the center of attention. Everybody knew where our house was. Everybody was coming. All of a sudden, we felt like, hey, we're important here. This Jesus is making a name for not only for himself, but for us too. Eventually, as night fell, and the crowds went home to their own homes and their meals and their chores, things quieted down and we all found a place to bed down for the night and we slept. But it was not much before daylight when all of a sudden we heard knocking on the door again. Apparently, the people who had been at our house yesterday, the day before, had told their friends and people on the outlying farms and neighbors in the community. And they were there to see this rabbi with all this 
preaching and teaching with authority, this healing, this ability to cast out demons. And here they were. I hope they had had breakfast. <laughs> so we went looking for Jesus because we knew we couldn't do anything for him. And we couldn't find him. He's gone. There was his bed. We could tell that he had slept in it, but we couldn't find it. And so we began to search. We searched around the synagogue. We searched in the marketplace. We walked up and down the streets. We even went out toward the outskirts of town where there were trails thinking he may have taken a walk. And eventually, we found him alone, praying. For someone who has the authority to preach and teach the Word of God, somehow or another, seeing him there praying to God, I began to realize that it's not a monologue. It's a conversation between two very real entities. Between God and this young man who had the gift to heal and cast out demons who had the authority to preach and teach and to amaze that he had this personal dialogue, conversation with God. It didn't really sink in that much that day, but looking back at it all these years later, How do come to understand where this authority came from? That somehow or another his prayers with God, his communion with God, they had become one. And while Jesus was doing his ministry in Galilee and eventually all the way to Jerusalem, We found him praying, communing with God. A lot of things happened that amazed us. His feeding of all those people on the hillside. His healing of people. His raising Lazarus. All of those things were just like a dream. We really thought this is going to change things. This is going to turn the world upside down. Or from my perspective, right side up. And God once again would be above all people in this whole plan. Well, on that day, we were anxious to get him back to the house because we knew there was a line stretching out down the block. But he didn't want to go. He wanted to go to another town. So that's kind of the story of the time that Jesus came to our hometown in Capernaum. It's a day I'll never forget. Like every day that followed, all the way to Jerusalem, the cross, and that empty grave. Thank you for letting me share my memories of that day.
not that long ago. Amen.